So as we get started, one of the early and critically important things we want to do with you is talk about what we mean when we use the word leadership or when we say leader. Because if we are not clear about that, then it can really shape your expectations of what a class like this is. And we want to be really clear about what we're trying to do in this particular class. We're also aware that leadership can mean anything from our broadest conceptions of how we interact in the world to very minute details, technical details. And so a leadership class could be huge and we could do leadership on and on and on, uh, but we only have a limited amount of time. And so we want to focus that. And one of the ways we focus that is with a clear definition of leadership. You can lose from the dictionary if you look at this. So a leader is a person who leads. Well, that's uh, in some sense not very helpful because it doesn't tell us anything about what's going to happen. But then you get to command. So, and it's got to be a group, an organization, or a country. So, in this, uh, leadership has to do with giving commands, with being in charge, with maybe with giving orders. But you can look down and see it's complicated almost immediately, immediately because apparently the leader is the principal player in a music group. And so somehow, even here in the dictionary, we've got complexity in leadership. One of the assignments we've asked you to do is go out and find a couple of definitions of leadership, some uh, maybe that you agree with and maybe one that you've got some questions about so we can start to have this rich conversation about what, what do we mean when we use the word leader or leadership. And we'll be asking you to clarify that for yourself because in the end, what needs to happen is for each of us to be really clear about what we're trying to say when we use these particular words and then when we're acting in the particular places that we have power or authority. So here's just a couple of different leadership definitions. It's accomplishing things that reach beyond solitary abilities by acting, getting others to act with maturity that surpasses limited self-interest. So this is broad. It also means it can't just be by yourself. Uh, Army Major wants to paraphrase Dwight Eisenhower, the art of getting other people to do things you want done and feel good about it. I would wonder if that would feel like manipulation if people found out that that was our definition of leadership, that it's not about anything mutual. It's about getting them to do what we want. Um, he, he, this person said he would go so far as to say the goal is to get the person to embrace the mission and own it. Some more definitions of leadership. Um, here's a person who wants to separate it from position. So that's a good conversation for us to have for people who perhaps are on a track to be ordained and are going to be in a particular position in a church, but it's not limited to those with positional authority. It's someone who influences others to achieve a common goal. So how does the common goal come about? Where does that uh, come from? And then a, a management consultant getting people to want to follow. So this has to do with motivation and inspiration, persuading. It says management's tactical leadership is strategic. So uh, thinking, thinking broadly, here's a, a Longer definition of leadership, when you give of yourself for the greater good of others with no expectation of reward. So this is kind of an internal definition of leadership that has, has to do with, with, with me or with you as we give of ourselves. Jump in a ditch with your whole team, so maybe there's servanthood involved. And then this uh, person says, as I deal with military families who need guidance toward a sustainable future, leadership is absolutely concerned with getting down to the trenches to do the dirty work. So there's some sense that for this person, leadership involves sacrifice and it involves service. The process of maximize or of social influence maximizes the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal. So you can see some goal future oriented in, in many of these, but they're very different. Um, I think they do have some threads. They have to do with making vision a reality. They have to do with knowing what to do. There's something about this expectation that the leader is going to be the person who helps others know what to do or knows what to do. Something about seeing the future and bringing it into focus. And I would say, by and large, these are definitions of leadership that want to get stuff done. Often, uh, definitions of leadership center around helping a group reach a commonly agreed upon goal or bringing others together. That's something that's often shows up in definition, particularly elementary definitions of leadership. 
There's a lot of studies of leadership, actually a quite a bit of academic work that's been done on leadership, a number of textbooks that we can show you and talk about to, with you in class. They, they tend to um, have a number of issues that they've got to deal with. One is the issue of task versus relationship. Does leadership involve task? Does it involve relationship? Does it involve some combination of the two? How do we navigate task and relationship given a limited amount of time and this desire to, as I said before, get stuff done? What do we do about an unknown and maybe unknowable future? If leadership's leading us into the future, do we need to learn for that? And then there are huge questions about purpose or telos in ministry. Can we talk about having a purpose and that being necessary for a definition of leadership? Because you'll note that if a leadership is to help a group reach a commonly agreed upon goal, that's kind of value neutral. Whatever the group decides to to have as a goal is going to be okay. And the question is, is that what we want as a definition of leadership? And then there's also issues in leadership theory about the multiplicity of definitions. Do we avoid that? Do we, are we trying to find kind of the clear, everybody agrees upon this, or is it okay to embrace this, this kind of diversity of, of leadership definitions? And what does that mean for leadership? For this class, and we'll talk about this when we're together and, and at various points during the during the class, leadership is choosing focus. And that's that's what we want to kind of lift up in in this leadership class that it, it involves personal agency. We're choosing. And what we're choosing is focus. It's our focus and the group's focus. And we want the proper balance of relationship, task, and learning with a purpose so that God's people can follow God farther into God's reign or, or God's kingdom. And I'll, we'll unpack that during the class. We'll take questions about that. You don't have to, in some sense, have this definition of leadership to even thrive in this class, but it does frame what we do because we work on these issues of how as leaders can we become people who can choose, who have agency to do that. Also, that we know what we're doing as we're choosing between relationship tasks and learning. Why are those important? And then what do we think is the end goal or the telos of, of our leadership, of any leadership? Um, it's a huge question about do we name values and purpose in leadership? Ron Heifetz, who's an excellent leadership scholar, says that we've leadership scholars have tried to have it kind of both ways. Leadership's value neutral. So it's kind of like math. We can look at stuff and we can dissect it. Um, scientifically, but he also says we need more leadership or we need better leadership. Well, those are value terms. And he says, in kind of in the middle of this, we cannot talk about a crisis in leadership and then say leadership is value free. Do we merely mean that we have too few people in our midst who can gather a following? Surely we are not asking for more messiahs of Waco or Johnstown who meet people's needs by offering tempting visions of rapture and sacrifice. The contradiction in our common understanding clouds not only the clarity of our thinking and scholarship, it shapes the quality of leadership we praise, teach, and get. And I, I would say I agree with this, that, that if we just say we want people who can get stuff done, then uh, we open ourselves to charismatic, narcissistic people who can gather a following, but then might do a lot of harm to them and to the world through what they do. So being clear about value and purpose and leadership will be one of the things that we want to do in this class. And we're happy to talk about that and, and learn with you about what you think as you think about those kinds of things, particularly if we're in environments where not everybody would agree on values and purpose. And that becomes a huge challenge. Let me focus on those task relationship and learning and just say a few words about each of them. Peter Drucker, who lived from 1909 to 2005, is the father of modern management. He invented the terms management by objective. It, some books that, that he wrote, The Effective Executive, Practice of Management, The Concept of a Corporation. He was born in Austria, moved to England in 1933. So think about those years. He moves between World War I and World War II. He eventually comes to America, settles in California, taught in California influenced by some economists, if you know Joseph Schumpeter, who wrote a book called uh, uh, 
Small is Beautiful about not wanting huge economic systems. John Maynard Keynes, who was an advocate for interventions in markets by the government, saw a role for large scale action to support society. He uh, grew up with Jewish parents who converted to Christianity, said he was raised in a liberal Lutheran household. Peter Drucker, his thinking stands behind most modern leadership concepts. So when, when we think of leaders as people who get stuff done, who know what to do, who are on the task, whether we know it or not, Peter Drucker is behind that, enormously influential. He said the only definition of a leader is someone who has followers. He's someone who gathers people up to get stuff done. Some other things he did, um, he said effective leadership is not about making speeches or being liked, it's defined by results. So this is a person who, who wanted to, you know, one thing's done. Uh, what gets measured gets improved. Um, so much of what we call management consists of making it difficult for people to work. And then I, I just personally appreciate this quote. He said, people who don't take risks generally make about two big mistakes a year. People who take risks generally make about two big mistakes a year. I think it was part of him saying it's okay to kind of lean into life and, and take, some, take some risks. He says, meetings are by definition a concession to a deficient organization. We either meet or work, you can't do both at the same time. So when people say to us, oh, I hate meetings, I wanna be in meetings, even people at church, I know that we meet so much. Peter Drucker's behind that, this sense that we're to be active, we're to be action, we're to be marked by our agency. Uh, management is doing things right, leadership is doing the right things. He also though said the purpose of a business is to serve customers, profit is necessary in order to keep doing that. So he had a great care for people even had the, he had this emphasis on task. And as a class, what I want us to be aware of is many of us are shaped by an understanding of leadership is that it, it accomplishes tasks. There's a list, we help things, we help a vision come reality. And that is that is almost wholly shaped by Peter Drucker's thinking on leadership. We're gonna focus on tasks and also from Drucker, a belief in a noble future, that the future can be predicted it can be, things can be measured and we can then plan towards that. So when you see charts where people say, okay, here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna cast our vision and then we're going to align everything and then we're gonna move towards the future. That's all Peter Druckian type thinking, very powerful. Also though comes relationship and to think in leadership, well, what does it mean to be in relationship? If we're gonna have groups, what's the relationship of this group gonna be? What's our relationship going to be with the group? For that, I want to go to Lawrence Kohlberg, who was a Harvard professor who came up with a theory of moral development. The highest stage was universal principles that apply to everything. So human rights, justice, equality. And he said, at our highest stage of universal principles, a person will prepare to act to defend these principles, even for going the rest of society in the process, pay consequences of disapproval or even imprisonment. So we had a great sense of we know what's right and we do what's right, actually, I think related to Peter Drucker. Carol Gillian, who was a student of Kohlberg's, came along and developed a feminist critique of his work. It's called In a Different Voice, Psychological Theory and Women's Development. And she looked at the world and she said, you know, it looked, looked to her like Kohlberg had only studied men and kind of what was what was considered masculine or what was considered good in the world that we're supposed to know what to do and do it. But she said men and women, males and females have been socialized differently. She is not making biological claims. She was trying to broaden the sociology of what was going on. And that females are more apt than males to stress interpersonal relationships and take responsibility for the well-being of others. So she developed a morality that was care-based emphasized interconnectedness and the universality, not of principles, but of relationship. And that acting justly means avoiding violence and helping those in need. In short, she, in, in that arena, raised the uh, kind of the voice of saying relationships matter. Like when we look at the world and we decide what to do, relationships matter. I think that relates to leadership. And when we come to think about leadership, then if we're attending to who we are as deeply human human beings, we want not just to get things done, 
but also to ask ourselves, can there be genuine leadership without relationship? So if at the end of getting a task done, if people are estranged and angry with one another, we may have accomplished something. We may have started a program. We may have built a building. We may have gotten a product launched or something like that. But but have we led, uh, if there's not relationship in the midst of it, what's the role of trust? And what does what does leadership do about a web of care, about looking around a group and an organization and saying we have responsibilities to one another that are broader even than, than what we accomplish together? In the midst of that, I think an emerging issue for leaders and for people who want to think about leadership to consider is the role of learning. Otto Sharma, a theorist at MIT, just um, not too long, well, this is from a book that's about 10 years old, but he's continued to work on this, says we live in an era of intense conflict and massive institutional failures, a time of painful endings and hopeful beginnings. We'll talk more about this quote and even this quote in class, but he is saying we're moving into a future where we don't know what it looks like and we often don't know what to do. He says the crisis of our time isn't a single crisis of a single leader. It is the dying of old social structures and a way of thinking, an old way of institutionalizing and enacting social forms. He says we need deep imagination in order to do this. And I think that raises this issue of if, if we're going to lead, but we're leading in the midst of a kind of collapsing environment where things are reemerging, it takes enormous learning to be able to lead. And one of the roles of the leader is to help people continue to learn so we don't so, so the stresses of it, we can care for one another and also so that we don't run off and basically do the wrong things. What does leadership do about a rapidly changing present and future? How do we gain new knowledge and skills? What does this say about leadership and resilience, personal resilience and group resilience, if, if those kinds of pressures are truly upon us and upon the groups that we are called to lead? In the midst of this, I believe we're following God into God's reign and being a part of God's mission. It's a way to, for us to explicitly raise the question of how is God involved in our leadership? Are we just doing things for God? Is God active through us? If so, how? How does God correct us? How's God active in other people? Um, this is from a book, Missional Church. I just want to direct your attention to the beginning there. You can certainly pause and read all this, but they say the central aspect of the teaching of Jesus was that concerning the kingdom of God, shalom, justice, righteousness, reconciling creation, thwarting powers of sin and death, and that for those of us who are doing church leadership, the church is not a vendor of religious goods and services. The church is a community of people that are about God's mission in the world. And if that's what we're about, then that's going to call for a particular type of leadership and leading. So again, that, that means that if we've got these kind of different pieces of leadership, then or different things that are necessary for the world, then leadership is going to be focused on choosing to ensure that balance. Like, how are we relating? How are we doing stuff? How are we learning so that we can follow God and and have God have God shape us as well? We're really interested to. Uh, know what you you think of when you think of leadership and interested in that conversation as we gather in class. I just want to say I'm actually we are continually working on this and and here's a um this is choosing the proper it's just a little different relationship. I think some issues for for us and, and for you as you think about your own definition of leadership is there a focus on self or on the group? Are there ways that you want to articulate purpose or values is task involved? Is relationship involved? And what do you do about this future that comes upon us? Do, do we know it? Can we predict it? What do we do when we can and uh, when we can't? We look forward to those conversations as together we discover what we believe leadership is and then shape ourselves to be part of that.